sports is crazy in this community. Uh, there's a running joke in Phillipsburg. They put a tax increase on ballot for a million bucks because they need five new police officers. <laughs> Voted down. They put an item on the ballot for $3 million worth of improvements to Maloney Stadium, where Phillipsburg High School plays football. Resounding victory. Padded seats at the 50-yard line, you got it. I have to be really careful in the fall what I schedule here on a Friday and a Saturday night because high school sports are so important in this community. I mean, people go to the high school events even if their kids have long graduated. Good morning, Express Times. I probably devote more ink and paper to high school sports than any other single subject that is printed in our newspaper. So when this came along about five years ago, I don't think anybody really had an idea of how it would take off, but it was pretty obvious from the first one that they did that this was uh, something really different and something special. As the years went on, we started paying closer attention to the actual high school musicals themselves. But we knew that all of these shows were a run up to the Freddies. It's no different than writing a preview to a high school football championship. I like to call it the Super Bowl of performing arts. Live from the State Theater Center for the Arts, it's the Freddie Awards. The Freddie Awards is like the Tony Awards for high school musicals in our area. No canary in a cage for me. This canary's ready to fly free. Cut the cord. Anna Gothard. <laughs> This is Anna's second Freddie in her high school career. She received the 2006 Freddie for Outstanding Actress in a supporting role in the production of State Fair. One of the reasons we wanted to do this is because putting on the high school musical was never given the kind of accolade that sports receive. So we wanted to elevate and say this is as much teamwork, as hard as any of these other things, and it deserves the recognition. People always credit me with having the idea for the Freddies, but I really stole the idea. I was at a theater meeting where directors were talking about what they do at their theaters, and someone talked about their program, which was a high school musical theater awards program. And I just thought on so many levels, it just rang bells, because what a great way to engage the community, what a great way to work with the schools, what a great thing for the kids. And I thought, we'll put community people on, we'll put the sponsors on, but it'll be about the kids. Because of time constraints, Southern Lehigh's multi-level set was constructed in just nine days. Thank you. I never had any plans of being in theater. Where every month we have a stand For 18 years, I was with the local public television station. I was always an on-air talent, doing everything from local interviews to documentaries to magazine shows and I really liked the State Theater. And I was approached by the theater's board to take the position, so I made the jump. Now I am a television producer. That's the way I look at the world. And to me, the only downside I could see to the other programs that were being done was that they were doing all this work, building this great thing where a theater audience could see it and no one else ever saw it. I'm like, why would you do all that and not have other people be able to see it? The fact that WFMZ, the TV station, agreed to do it, not only produce it, but air it live. I mean, they were crazy to do that. This is live TV. We're not taping it for anything. We can't stop anything. That was the vision that really changed the Freddies. It really made it so much different than anything that I think exists in the country. We have lots and lots of scholarship awards that are made to individual students, to schools. Victoria People Fred watch Eagle. the broadcast and just say, I want to give, you know, $2,000 to the performer who takes home the outstanding dancer. I want to do this, I want to do that. And at last count, I think it was around $80,000 that's given out as a result of the Freddie Awards. When you hear the term overnight sensation, that's what the Freddie Awards became. I mean, it was just phenomenal. Vikuma is our volunteer coordinator. Sharon Chapman's on the annex door. Sue Simino, number five. Tony doing raffle. 
<laughs> Mark just radioed me and says my fly was open the whole time. Haha, <laughs> 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 very funny. You got me, though. When the Freddies began, Vic was the person I just thought would be the best to interact with the schools, the kids, the musical directors, because he's also a performer in local theater, and he loves it. What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming. The thing I like most about the Freddy Awards is I get to go out and see every production. There's so much great talent out there and so many moving performances, and I love that part of the job. I don't even consider it a job. Good afternoon, Freedom High School. This is Tasha with your afternoon announcements. The softball game against Easton has been postponed until tomorrow. No boys soccer practice today after school. Again, no boys soccer practice today after school. Shout out to the FHS security guards. You guys rock. Oh, don't get this West Coast. Woo! I teach English and theater at Freedom High School. I went to Lehigh University actually on a basketball scholarship, and I ended up getting my teaching certificate. Then a pigs. They all but stomachs and we all but food. They eat us hungrily, and when they're true with us, they belch us. So Amelia's like that bitter woman in the corner. Well, I've directed shows at Freedom High School since 2002. I've directed Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoat, Guys and Dolls, West Side Story, Susicle the Musical, Midsummer Night's Dream. I had my first stab at a Shakespeare play this past fall. It was awesome. And now, Bye Bye Birdie. Um, travelers, I'm noticing you now. At the very end, you are so convinced. You guys become very integral to the scene. Who are they trying to convince? You. They're trying to convince all you guys. And at the end, you're singing. OK, you have to be, wow, he is great. Teaching drama class, I can find kids who might be taking it just for fun and have a spark and never have done it before, encourage them to audition for the show, and bam, there they are. That's how I found John Adriatis, our Conrad Birdie, actually. He's in my drama class. Oh, my baby. Oh, oh, yeah. We're doing a musical Bye Bye Birdie, yeah. and I'm playing Conrad Birdie. <laughs> he's, he's big, he's the, he's the Elvis kind of character. He's like the rock and roll star. Every, every girl wants to meet him, and they, they go crazy. It's basically exactly like Elvis. If you feel it in here, well, then it's got to be right. Oh, baby. <laughs> oh, honey. <laughs> I always played soccer, you know what I mean? So I was always a soccer star, not a drama. You, you always hear drama and think, like, that's for the drama kid. Fiddle, fiddle, fiddle. Fiddle, fiddle, fiddle. 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 Fiddle, and had to sing, dance, and everything like that. It was just a blast. Amanda Costales, who's currently Rosie in Bye Bye Birdie, is not the most outgoing person in the world, but when she's on stage, she just lights it up. We did Anything Goes the spring of my junior year, and I got the lead role, and I just flipped out. I couldn't believe it. Anything Goes. She doesn't have a conceited bone in her body, and she will work very hard at getting whatever she needs to do to make a role just right. Yeah, yeah that's it. And then and, and be in control, like I said to John. Um... The thing that lets me get up on stage in front of all those people, in front of millions of people, is because I love it. I love being able to make people happy, to have that connection with the audience. If I can just take them away from all their troubles just for a minute, just because I'm singing a note, that's, that's all that matters. We love you, Amanda, and we'll be true. When you're not near us, we're blue. Oh, Amanda, we love you. That's right. Go again, go again. I moved. Oh my God. Go again. I moved. I moved. <laughs> When I was young, I always used to play soccer. I played soccer a whole lot. And then 
at around fourth grade, I was diagnosed with juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, and I wasn't allowed to play sports anymore. And I had been taking like acting camps at places over the summer, and I thought, well, I can't really do sports anymore, so why not invest myself into something I can? And that's when I started doing theater fully as like my main activity, and ever since then, it's been me. Over that way. These people you spend countless hours with. In our case, these are people that you audition with, these are people you rehearse with, these are people you perform with, and these are eventually people that you do it all over again, year after year, show after show, and they do, in a way, become your family. Anna, feel the tingle. <laughs> we call the Freddie Awards the F word, not because I dislike the Freddie Awards. It's because it's our method of finding the happy medium to de-emphasize the competition aspect. The kids perform for themselves because it's art and because theater is so much fun and it's about camaraderie, it's about something you can look back on and say, man, that was a fun time. We do theater for ourselves and any accolades we get, icing on the cake. musical this year is Les Miserables. I will be playing Fontaine. This year we're doing Les Mis. My role is Fontaine. I dreamed that love would never die. I dreamed that God would be harder to be. Emmaus is doing Les Mis too. Parkland is doing Les Mis this year. We announced that we were doing Les Mis before anybody announced any of the shows for next year. Emmaus High School decided to do Les Mis last spring. We just didn't think that we needed to send an email to the other high schools. After we'd already posted what we were going to do, Jill from Emmaus High School decided that she was going to do Les Mis as well. And when I first saw it, I was taken aback. Not only was she doing Les Mis, but it was the same weekend as ours. It's about our school, it's about us, it's, an, it's not about what any other school is doing. If it had been different weekends, maybe we could have each shared in the audience. But I felt that we're so close geographically that someone's going to suffer with the audience. And we have a much larger facility. I don't know, I think she said 700 people, and we seat 1,500. And we're spending a, a lot of money on a show, so we really expect to fill this place up. I chose Les Mis because I feel that at this particular point in time, I have an extremely talented group of students. There's a lot of talent at Parkland, so we could have filled the cast three, four, five different ways. They've put their hearts and souls into this production, and they've worked so hard. She does decent work over there. There's nothing wrong with what they do over there. I just feel really strongly about this cast. We're going to be tough to beat. Can we stop the smoke, please? Christy, stop the smoke. Well, it does the job, but it's really sure. tough in there. <laughs> We're, we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll figure, we won't do it. We won't do it with the smoke. You're making me nervous, okay? <laughs> I 
broach this subject with my students at the beginning of the rehearsal process because I wanted to make sure that they understood my position on what could possibly be construed as a rivalry and that they understood that that's not what it's about. Parkland and Emmaus have always been rivals in sports and now in musical theater because of the Freddies. The directors, I don't think they ever say, it's about the Freddies, it's about the Freddies. I've never about heard any of them say it's anything It's just always Freddies. in the, like, under the surface. It's definitely there. <laughs> Mark and I are sort of on opposite sides with the, when it comes to the Freddie issue. I, I was in love with it from the get-go. Being part of the Freddies and getting up for best show and getting to perform on TV created such exposure in the community that I started selling tickets left and right. The first show that we were nominated for there was Fiddler on the Roof, and we David got Clark. one Freddie Award that first year. But I was jaded at the time by the school that did win a lot of the awards. But I think that when community members see that our program has been winning awards from an organization outside of the community, they can understand that something really positive is going on here. When it got to be competitive to the point where schools were being negative with each other, I have a problem with that. That's not the Freddies' fault. Certain schools will be that way to other schools, just like in any rivalry. Last year, the Freddies are going on, and it's the end of the night, and Whitehall wins. Oh! Parkland is out of there. Like, just leave. Turn your head, like, as, like, where's Parkland? They, they walked out. Had attitude, me? Yeah. We love being able to say who got more rewards at the Freddies. Mayus High School. Parkland High School. Mayus High School. Parkland High School. Mayus High School. You know, I think it's unfortunate this year that we're both doing Les Mis. I do not feel guilty about our decision, and I'm hoping in future years that it doesn't happen again, or that we're not the same weekend, you know, or whatever. But this year, this is what happened. So, so what? This is News Talk 790, WAEB, Allentown, Easton, Bethlehem. It's Gunther in the morning, 5.30 till 10. News Talk 790, WAEB, WAEB.com. WAEB. My guest this morning is Shelley Brown. She is the CEO, Chief Executive Officer of the uh, State Theater, President and CEO. Yes, please salute. Good morning, sure. Bobby. Yes, yes. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? You um, look great. When I came here, the State Theater was certainly not existent. It was sort of like, well, if we get six shows a year, I guess we're lucky. Well, I think, I think actually... You have raised the bar so high. People now expect it. Now, all of a sudden, Allentown Symphony Hall is doing more shows. Civic Little Theater is. The State Theater is the one that's, I feel, primarily responsible for the resurgence of everybody else. It's it really is. He's going to get me in trouble, though. The State Theater is not making money on these shows. We are struggling to keep the building beautiful and taken care of. And I don't think people understand that we are a nonprofit. Our mission is to share the arts, to share a stage, to bring people together in downtown Easton in this beautiful old building. Usually when people come for the first time, I mean, the reaction is such awe. I mm -hmm. mean, this building is on the National Registry of Historic Places. It's one of a hundred theaters in the entire country that have been restored. Let's explain for the sake of folks that have never heard about the Freddies, how they got their name. The Freddies are named for our resident ghost, Fred, J. Fred Osterstock, who's very famous, but we thought it would be a, a great way to honor the memory of Fred, to call it. Who's still, who's still at Who's the, still there, yes, and looks after us, and, and, and I really believe looks after us. And I, people, people do, have, you claim you thought you yes. saw him. Yeah, I did. I did see him. And and he, he really looks after us. So we Shelley just, never did drugs in the 60s? <laughs> never. To my knowledge. Never. I absolutely believe that Fred is here. 100% you cannot convince me otherwise. Fred Osterstock was a manager of the theater back in the 40s and 50s. There have been a number of Freddy ghost stories, and those people who saw this apparition saw a picture of Fred Osterstock and said, that's who we saw, so that's how the ghost got its name. Three or four years ago, during one of our, um, our Freddy rehearsals, our, um, the choreographer of the show was on the edge of the stage here sh talking to the kids, sh explaining uh, some moves. And as he's stepping back, goes off the lip of the stage and hits the side of the uh, stairs right there on his ribs. And in that second, 
There was a clock right off stage here that started spinning backwards. And it wasn't like an internal clock. It was one of those just regular battery-operated clocks. And it was a, a very traumatic moment. And there were like 20 of us looking at this clock that was just spinning around in circles and then just stopped. And we all just ran. Needless to say, I didn't tell them that it was an atomic clock just resetting itself. That's 9th grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade. But you're talking about the hair, I don't know. It, it changes every year, but right now, I like it now because it's like a new style. And I wouldn't have had it like this if I didn't do the Elvis, but I probably still would have it real long like that, but I don't yeah, know. We kind of threw it into that Elvis style, and he ended up liking it. it. <laughs> Mom's a hairdresser. Yeah. <laughs> so we so had to do the yeah. whole Elvis thing. Now, how yeah. this one? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Around, around, in a circle. In a circle. <laughs> he came to me first and said, Dad, uh, I don't know if I can do this. Oh, they I don't were feel comfortable. Tryouts. She had us dancing like, yeah. he's, he's he, manly, like little. He sister. actually so came actually. to us that night and, and didn't think he was going to continue trying no. out because he just said, I can't do this. I don't so think I can do that, this. Be, so, before, yeah. Yeah, he's a soccer well, player. He yeah. said, oh, you know, I can't do this. And, and then, uh, then I guess Miss Wesco spoke with him again the next day, and they had drama tryouts, right? And that's the part you really like, the drama the part, the yeah. acting. These shoes were given to him. They were black in color, and we had to paint them. But when John dances, he wears them out. These, these all, the black comes out. So I just got these a couple days ago, and we had to make the laces, and I uh, even painted them up. And uh, this sponged it on there, and he'll have to wear this at rehearsal and the main event on Thursday. All right, are we all ready? Um, are you wearing a blue shirt? Yeah. Are you wearing a cleavage showing shirt? It's the first thing that Apparently. <laughs> The experience I get from doing high school theater at Freedom is so much more different than anything else like I've done, just because these kids who like, they all love the same things I do. Like, I didn't have anyone to talk to really, like my parents, like, they don't really understand me, so we're all these theater kids all in one place and we're all having fun with each other. I guess it's akin to what a sports team's like. Good morning, Freedom Cam. This is Zach on Monday, back at school. And um, basically, I'm not really sure what to shoot for this, so I'm just gonna shoot what works. Uh, over here, we have Amanda walking away. I'm gonna go to the bathroom. Bye. I started dating Amanda back during Anything Goes. And we dated for about three months. I, had, I enjoyed myself, she enjoyed herself. It was nice. Really inappropriate. We're really, we're really viewing the stars' lives. <laughs> are you really coming in here? Me and Amanda, are, are, we're friends, and like, we, we're, we're friends now, so like, there's no old feelings or old bitterness or anything. Hi, it's me again. Okay, Zach, okay. What do you want me to say? I have nothing to say right now. I was gonna go and sit down. Say about how much you love me. I love Megan Truscott. I do. We're getting married. She's my best friend. She's my best friend in the world. So, Katie and Allie Moster, too, they'll be the ones. They'll start to, they don't care what it is. They have no inhibitions at all, and they just start doing things. And. It's great on the stage. It's not so great sometimes, you know, in, in the classroom. I've had Miss Cortez for seven years. Mm -hmm. So oh, she's seen me. She's seen me grow up, which is so weird. It's just so weird. And like, we've had her ups and downs. Like, she screamed at me. I don't I think she's like, she's, she, I think she's brilliant at what she does. And I absolutely like, I probably respect her more than I respect a lot of other people that, you know, do this whole high school theater thing. And I also like have a very special place yeah. in my heart for her. Yeah. She's wonderful. And so when she says things to us, 
that really like hurts. Like it was tough when she sat us down to like talk to us. Yeah. About what how, did she say? Um, we could never be leaders because nobody. We could never be us. leaders because nobody nobody likes us. She nobody nobody likes, us. likes us. And she, you know, anytime we complain or like jokingly complain, like, oh, Miss Cortez, none of the girls like us. You know, she's like, yeah, you wonder why they don't like you. Look at what you look at you. And she says it like in her joking, like you know, sarcastic, like self. But at the same time, like that, I mean, it makes you a little upset because like, when you like really value a person's opinion, and then you know, we are two very confident girls, but underneath. We are just as insecure vulnerable as and definitely insecure as everybody else, if not more. Like, I'll walk down the hallway at school. Oh, I hate and that. And I'll say hi to the kids in the cast. They don't even wait to And they don't you. say hi back. It's like, what did I do? Like, really, no, honestly, and it's hard. It, it's it's hard. really hard. Maybe we are bitches. You are, I don't know. <laughs> The district allocates, you know, money to the sports teams. Well, it's not the same story with us. A show at Freedom High School costs about sixteen to twenty thousand dollars, okay. so we raise the money, and that's what we do. We're one hundred percent self-sufficient, and I'm so proud of that. I went to parents last year and said we need to raise X amount of dollars. They went out and went door to door and sold, you know, entertainment books and sold, you know, Longenberger baskets. I'm not a good fundraiser. I just, it's not my thing. I don't like asking for money. I really don't like asking for anything. The fact that we have two gyms and one auditorium little black box, um, it makes me a little upset because I feel like we put all this work into our productions and I feel like we can be just as good as the football team or the basketball team. People don't realize that theater is a team sport. I think that's what made it easier for me to even to go from soccer to theater because I was used to the team aspect. It's a group of people trying to accomplish a goal. Everyone has to help. No one's less important, more important. You're in a team trying to make a beautiful musical. John, I didn't think it was possible for you to be hammier, but you are. Um, <laughs> so that's good, but now you gotta be careful though about keeping your head down. If you do your shtick the whole time, then it will no longer be a shtick. My name is Fashine and I rock your world. I'm also known as the Gucci girl. I'm super cute, super fast. 36, 36 and a half. in the show, it's all music. And so the way that we actually get to learn about Fontaine's story is through your solos. So they really are very important. I know. The scrim was up before the overture was even done. The lights were on. 
You didn't hear him at the, the beginning. The convicts weren't on to start. Are they supposed to stand there like that forever? What? They're supposed to stand there like that with the light on frozen? No, but they can just light you. Well, that's what I'm saying. We can't have this. You got to get your stuff together, guys. Well, that sucked. Go back. Do it again. So um, I actually have very little to say, which is a good thing. So I'm going to say this now. First of all, I don't tear up a lot. What makes me tear up is beauty. I always tell you this. I don't cry when I get sad. I just tough it out, OK? <laughs> but when something is beautiful, when there's beauty, and that can mean a lot of things to people. But to me, there are moments I'm sitting back there, and it's like, oh, my god. And I think, like, how old are you people? I was just so impressed, and not just impressed, I was touched. And not only is Mrs. Keebler very proud of you, I'm also very proud of you. I've done all eight shows here at Maya since my freshman year, the fall play, the musical. And um, it's just, it's really tough to like let rehearsal go and let um, this show go. And I mean, to end with this show is just really, it's perfect. It's perfect. I didn't think you could go out like any better than our freshman year show and then our sophomore year show, but we really did it with this one. So I'm really excited. Last night of the spring musical, uh, historically, ever since I've been here, which is just been my ninth year, the kids all gather on stage, they do American Pie. And then they kick off their shoes, as in the lyrics, and it's just sort of like their last time on the stage, and it sort of finalizes.
and uh, then there's a DVD form on the back. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, now's the time we start talking about the F word. You guys know we have a lot of kids in the show this year, all right? And there's only so many tickets for the Freddies. And I'm sorry if you, you know, you, your parents all want to see you, but it is on live television. That's what they tell us. They're not going to give us more tickets. Okay, everyone else wants to go too. It's the hottest ticket in town. Now, the show is over, so we can talk about the Freddies. We all know about the Freddie Awards and, and how they're done and this and that. And, and so you guys just really have to understand that it's a subjective thing. And you know there are very different kinds of shows. You know, you know that there are schools who did Les Mis, and it's very different than our show. And we don't know what the judges are really looking to compare for. We don't really know that. So don't get your hopes up, OK? Try to keep the positive memories from the show alive. Uh, and that's what you have to do, OK? Right? Right. Yeah. OK, so please don't get disappointed if we don't get nominated. OK, please don't get disappointed. We do theater for who? Ourselves. Ourselves. I want to hear you say it again. Who do we do theater for? Ourselves. OK. I didn't get to do this before the last show, so I'd like all our seniors to stand up. What we'd like to do is I'd like to thank you all. Uh, Amanda, four years with you. Um, just incredible. You were wonderful, and you are. And thank you for all your wonderful help. Uh, Zach. Oh, I got you halfway. I got you halfway. Here we go. Uh, people, people cry. When I met you, Katie. you were a wee lad. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, you really worked so hard as to get in control, and you worked so hard, and I just watched you mature as a person, as a performer, and I'll miss you so much. Okay, next. John. <laughs> oh, oh, me, oh. I just realized this. You did an Elvis impression in your drama class. I know. I know. I didn't I know. remember I th that. You didn't remember that? No, you know, and, and I, I, just, I swear I didn't. Um, yeah. And, and you're just, you put your heart and soul into the show, and you became a great leader, and you're just incredible, and I'm going to miss you. Let's give a round of applause for So now, the next thing I, I would like to bring up is something that's really important to me. Uh, I found out, like, during our tech week, and I didn't think it was appropriate to tell you guys, uh, but Vic Kuma, who is everything that is good about the Freddies, he is the heart of the Freddie Awards. And uh, he's just an incredible uh, human being. And a couple weeks ago, uh, Vic <laughs> was uh, diagnosed with cancer. Since we spoke last, I had surgery to remove a large lymph node under my arm. And uh, two days later, on March 13th, I found out that it was cancerous. And um, the diagnosis was metastatic malignant melanoma. This is just breaking my heart because I love him so much and I hate to see him faced with this. I'm not giving up yet. I mean, I, I am a... I'm gonna fight this thing, and um, they're gonna, we're gonna treat it aggressively, and I'm um, still gonna hopefully be, along, uh, be around a long time. And, um, but um, I know it's a very, very serious um, illness and disease, so. I can't imagine losing him. So uh, what we're doing is not imagining that. We're staying very focused that this year we're gonna do everything we can to make it possible for him to concentrate on the Freddies, because the Freddies is the best medicine there is for him. The Freddie Awards just has a real special place in my heart, and I'm just telling the doctors, just get me through May 22nd, and I'll be fine. That's the, that's the main thing. Hopefully, I'll get to present another award again this year. Last year, he presented the Outstanding Musical, which is the award. It's the award. And my full intention was that he would always present it. So this isn't something unusual. This is something he's always going to do, and, and he will this year. And it's a big day for Lehigh Valley Thespians. The nominations for the Freddie Awards are in, and we have them live. I love the nomination process. That's neat. We've been nominated for Best Show every year. For them to get to perform on TV is like the best. I do want to get nominated for Best Show. I try to stay low key. I take it with a grain of salt. 
The kids know that we might not be nominated. We might not be up there on that stage being able to perform in front of all those people. We might be sitting in the back of the auditorium. We might not be nominated at all. Everybody does feel like, I want to be nominated. We are number one! We are number one! Lock's here in the house. Hello! Hello! Ed Hanna is the WFMZ meteorologist. He is just a dream to work with. A few months after the first event, I remember Shelly pulled me aside and she said, you know, we'd like you to be the co-host uh, for the Freddie Awards next year in a heartbeat. I mean, there was not even any thought whatsoever. I said, in, count me in. Ed does all this stuff in the elementary schools about weather. So the Freddie kids grew up with him and he's like a rock star to them. In junior high school, I played Conrad Birdie and Bye Bye Birdie. I just happen to have my outfit right here. One last kiss. Oh, give me one last kiss. I'll do a little spiel. I'm going to introduce you, ask you to can, tell us how we got to yeah, where we're at this sure. point, and then we're going to go into the first nomination. The 2008 Freddie Awards will be broadcast right here on WFMZ TV and WFMZ.com on Thursday, May 22nd at 7 p.m. But before the awards, we need to know who's been nominated, and we won't keep you guessing anymore. Here now with the nominations for the Freddie Awards are Ed Hanna and Shelly Brown. Yeah. By Shelly Brown, CEO and president of the Twin hey, Theater. I'm so, so excited. Good to see Another you. year. This is so I exciting. I mean, a lot of good things that are going to be happening here. Of course, the Freddies are going to be two weeks, two weeks from tonight, starting at 7 o'clock. You won't want to miss that at all. But to get to where we are here, celebrating the 27 high schools, theater, the bar continues to be raised every year. And I want to, first of all, welcome not only all the students and teachers, administrators at all these different schools, parents, family, and not only here watching 69 during our newscast, but of course, worldwide live streaming on the internet. The way we get here is our wonderful, wonderful evaluators. There's always some concern about the evaluation process. How many judges are there, like six? No, there's more than that. Six come to our show. Six come to the each. The voting That's what process I don't doesn't understand. even make sense. I don't even know what this goes on with the judging. And you know what, I'm happy not to know. We have about 30 evaluators. They're anonymous, we keep their, their names quiet. And every show is evaluated by six separate people. Okay, right. And then of course the results are tabulated. And, and here they here are. Here it is, just literally, yeah. this has been so secret. I mean, this is the first time I've seen it just a couple of minutes ago. It's like your heart kind of stops while you're waiting for it because you worked so hard and you're just, you're praying for everyone. So we'll start. The nominations for Outstanding Chorus, Bangor Area High School, Wonderful Town. Emmaus High School, Les Miserables. Parkland High School, Les Miserables. Freedom High School, Bye Bye Birdie. The outstanding performance by an actress in a supporting role. When I got this part, I was like, okay, here's your chance. You can actually take it. And I was like, I really want that nomination. Elena Zervos, Mrs. May Peterson, from Freedom High School's production of Bye Bye Birdie. Allison Christopher, who played Tim McAfee in Freedom High School's production of Bye Bye Birdie. Katie West performance of Madame Denardier. Outstanding performance by an actor in a supporting role. I've done theater for so long, and it, to get recognition for it, besides someone telling you, oh, you did a really good job, it's such a good feeling. Zachary Gibson. <laughs> and Mr. Harry McAfee from Freedom High School's Bye Bye Birdie. Ian Hartman playing Tenardier. Dennis Hahn playing Tenardier from Parkland High School. Outstanding featured performance by an actor. My hopes for Conrad and the Freddies would to at least be nominated because I'd love that. John Andreas <laughs> and Conrad Brady from Freedom High School Bye Bye Brady. Next is outstanding featured performance by an actress, Ali Mosser as Eponine. Nominations for outstanding performance by an actor in a leading role. Christopher Brown playing John Valjean. Trevor James playing John Valjean. Nick Conti playing Albert Peterson. When I saw my name, I was very excited. <laughs> And I was very relieved because I, I just wanted the nomination. The outstanding performance by an actress in a leading role. The yes. thing that's yes. most sad to me is that I'm going to be leaving Freedom and I'm going to be able to do another show. If I'm nominated, that's wonderful. That's awesome. Amanda Castellas as Rosie Alvarez in Freedom High School's production of Bye Bye Birdie. And finally, the outstanding overall production of a musical. Easton Area High School, Guys and Dolls, Emmaus High <laughs> Parkland High School, Le Miserable, Freedom High School, Bye Bye Birdie. Congratulations, one and all.
and rehearsals start tonight. Uh, that's unbelievable. <laughs> Thanks for joining Bye, us. Bye, everybody. Bye. I was like really excited when we got the nominations. I thought we were gonna get some because you know, but I didn't expect like 16. I mean, that's like a lot. I am so excited. I don't even know how to explain it. You may all call somebody now. Oh, I, I got nominated. John got nominated. Ali got nominated. I'm gonna be honest. Like, I really wanted a nomination. I was so shocked, and my breath was taken away. Dad's crying? Dad doesn't cry. It's an amazing feeling to see them reacting because although we talk about how these awards don't matter, you can't help but get caught up in it. You know, about 10.30 this morning, my stomach started going like this. Uh, you know, and my students were trying to tell me to calm down. But when we're up there watching the television screen, hoping, I just kept hoping. They deserve it. They deserve it. I can't say that I, I know how this is going to turn out because it's always different each year. It's. I mean, and who knows? Oh, exactly. Who's voting? Oh, really? Like, who what knows it? who sleeps with who? <laughs> <laughs> you know? What have you been doing to get that nomination? We have 16. Parkland has 16, and the other school has 16. I think it's funny that, you know, you've got the two Les Mis schools, the two big schools, and then, then you've got, you know, Bye Bye Birdie in the middle of that, and Bye Bye Birdie could come in and take it away. It's definitely more exciting this way. These students, from all 27 schools come together and they've got two weeks to put together the opening and the closing numbers. We request four kids from each school to be on our opening number and it's almost like theater camp. I've seen kids from six years ago when we first started are still friends today because of the Freddie Awards. It's really great to see the kids instead of just having these rivalries getting along, cheering for each other. It's not like sports. My friends have done the opening number, and they always said, you have to be open to meet new people. So I introduce myself to everyone. <laughs> OK, everybody. We are delighted to see you. I can't believe it's been a whole year. This is our favorite time of the year. And we're going to take care of you, and I think treat you like the uh, exceptional, best of the best stars that you are. For the opening number, I've chosen four songs that are loosely based on a theme of what an exciting circumstance this is. All right, so if you're going to stay and would like to, to audition for those um, vocal Parts stay, everyone else out. Stories of living, stories of dying, and ways we can deal with our fear. All right, let's head over to the gentlemen. Stories of horses, parental divorces, and how, rich or poor, it's a very small sphere where we appear. Okay, and now we'll pair you up, okay? So can we do the whole screen bar? Stories of living, stories of dying, and we Horses, parental divorces, and how rich or poor, it's a very small sphere where we appear. <laughs> that put a complete spin on one. Of the <laughs> no, it was great. Okay, so yes, we're good. Yeah, we're yes, Do and it. then we'll, we'll want to hear yeah. them. Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. all right. We're gonna have Brittany, Doyen, and Alex Tulip. And guys, I need you to sing it one more time. Okay, like I did my best. I need to learn how to sing, and I need to learn how to 
dance just a little bit because with a musical, it's one third dancing, one third singing, and one third acting. And I had none, none of the thirds. Yeah, you guys want any pizza? We'll take it. Cold pizza, anybody? It's production. Well, the, the worst part is they have me on steroids and other medications to decrease the swelling in the brain, which makes me not sleep well. So the lack of sleep, that's a problem. And, um, and of course, I'm worried about losing my hair. The thing to me that represents Vic is, you know, in addition to the Freddies, we have this day once a year where our members buy tickets for a season. It's become a real sort of cult event, if you will. The line wraps around the building. Sometimes the wait to get your tickets once the box office opens is seven hours. Everybody's cranky, everybody's complaining. But he works the line, and he gets to know everybody in the line. Vic, what he does at six in the morning is he walks out the door with a smile on his face, and he sings to them. Well, this year, it was kind of a dreary morning, and Vic started to sing, and he sang, Oh, What a Beautiful Morning. There's a bright golden haze on the meadow. There's a bright golden haze on the meadow. The and all of a sudden, everybody in the line started singing like on the street in Easton, all these people singing this song. And the crowd goes crazy, and everybody's happy, and everybody's relaxed. And I thought then, before any of this happened, this is extraordinary. This is who this person is, that he makes it a beautiful morning. He makes every day a beautiful morning. That's who he is. That's, that's who he is. As a friend, it, this is just breaking my heart. I love him. My kids love him. And it's just really, you know, it's painful. It's the most painful thing I've ever gone through. I did take dance lessons when I was younger. I just never thought I was that good, so I stopped. But I do love it. I love to dance. I can't sing or dance at all, but I have to poke at the beginning. And uh, I just did this because Zach and John said, come on, this will be easy. We have to do something. So I went out and did that, and poke ain't easy. It's not hard to pick up on the dancing. And like as far as singing goes, as long as you're not singing too loud, it doesn't matter if you're bad. The first time that I met Miss Wesco, she told me to do the musical. I looked at the dancing moves and I just, I was very turned off. It was, for lack of a better word, flamboyant for me. Okay, the stereotype of gay boys in theater. Throughout high school, people say, oh, you're in theater, you must be gay. I know guys that have struggled with that. They love theater and yet and they don't want to be viewed as gay. Exactly. Whatever, call me gay. Like, I'm not gonna let you label me just because of what I like to do. It doesn't matter what you are. You're a person just like me and there's nothing greater than that. We like gay boys because they don't oh, hit on us. We love gay boys. Okay, tonight we have 30 evaluators coming in and we will be voting on the, the winners, the, the Freddie Award recipients, as, as we say. We go category by category. There's going to be a much heated debate and discussion about the individual nominees. We have the ballots here. We'll, we'll talk about every show on here. Uh, a lot of debate, discussion, and uh, some are very heated and very contested. From day one, the evaluation process has been highly um, debated and disputed. Some people think it's just flat out crooked. Other people don't question it at all, and some people have questions about how can it possibly work. All I can tell you is that the process works. Is it 100% perfect? Um, no. We're really careful and have learned over the years. We're doing our best. A lot of people were upset that we won costumes because we rented costumes last year. And it kind of came up again this year. There was a, a couple articles in the paper. Um, some of the other schools were considering not doing the Freddies again this year. And, and they stated one of the reasons was because of this costume issue, how it wasn't fair that a school won a Freddie Award for renting their costumes. Vic explained to me how this works. It's not whether you make the costumes or whether you 
rent them. It's how you utilize your funds to make the best show possible. I would say if you're renting your costume versus making them, maybe you shouldn't be in that category. I, I don't know, but hey, I'm not the guy who runs the Freddy Awards. So what do you do? You pull out? You know, that's what happens when adults get involved in something that's, that's really meant for, for young people. I don't know if we're actually going to count these tonight, but we'll go category by category, mark down the recipients, and then there will only be maybe three people that know who the eventual recipients will be, and they will be, um, I, I can't tell you. I'd have to kill you if, if I told you who it was. Yep. Yep. All right. I know Dick's family's never seen the show. They're in Seattle. They're across the country. They have no idea what it really is. So we're raising the money to bring his Seattle relatives east for this. And so really, all we had to do was say it. And checks and notes and just poured in. Uh, we have probably now close to, I mean, we had hoped to raise $5,000. We probably now have close to 20. And and the rest of the money, as I said, would be in a fund for Vic's kids. And they all, you know, they talk, the notes just talk, people just again and again and again, it's the same thing. Here's one, let us know if you're falling short and we'll do more. Um, you know, please add this. He's one of the nicest people I've ever known. I mean, that just, that's, <laughs> people just can't do enough. They can't do enough. I went to Emmaus' show, and I can tell you that most of the people in that audience probably felt that was the best high school musical show they had ever seen. And they were probably right. Unfortunately, they didn't come five miles up the road and see our show. This is the sixth year of the Freddie Awards, and you're seeing, you know, really the top three schools this year with the most nominations, Emmaus, Parkland, and Freedom. And uh, if you don't think people pay attention to that, they certainly do. There's never been an overall production winner that hasn't won either Best Actress or Best Actor. And then you take a look at, you know, the stats for the five years if you're developing a predictive model. Each of those three schools that I mentioned fall right into that predictive model. Regular season, boys football was undefeated this year. Boys baseball is undefeated this year going in. But we have pretty talented kids in the A-wing, as we call it here, that participate in chorus and band and theater, and this is really our state championship. The key to what makes us fun that I learned, because it took me a couple years to get into it, is when you're there, um, enjoy watching what other people are doing. It's a lot of fun to see what they do. And always be the, you know, friendly group. Don't be the nasty group. Always be the... Parkland is so friendly. We're so nice to everybody. <laughs> yes, Chrissy. Get her. Yes. Uh, One day more, another day, another destiny, this never-ending road to Calvary. These men who seem to know my crime will surely come a second time. One day more, oh, you'll be worlds away. And yet, with you, my world has started. One more day, oh Lord, my big secret. But I honestly do not think that we're going to get that shot. There's going to be a split of votes. I don't even think Mayo's going to win. I think that's the issue with two powerful schools doing the same show. How are they going to decide which Les Mis and then which school? I actually think we're going to come away with more than one. I think you'll see where it starts going early on. Just like when you're watching any award yeah. show, you start to see, uh-oh, they got that, uh-oh, they got that. Hmm.
also larger small groups of singers now who help shows made the dance numbers look professional. Our next category honors the principal male character in the show. We had this creeper photographer. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Ready, ready, ready. Conditions could see winds 15 to 25 miles an hour. here live on WFMG. I'm really excited. I know we're going to do such a good job because everyone's just so like connected to each other. It's very exciting and the stage is huge. I still get lost when I go back there. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to going out there, being on TV in front of the crowd. That's just the greatest rush. It's cool just to be there and to geek out with all these other theater nerds. It's, since it's gonna be like on TV and anything, like people I know will see me and it'll be cool. My mom can't wait. That's probably one of the things that she looks forward to the most throughout the year is the Friday Awards and it's just one of the best nights of the year. So right now my kids are backstage talking. They're having a meeting in the lobby. Several of the seniors decided to hold this meeting because last night we were here and there were some people talking on their cell phones. I had to ask them to be quiet and they're just gonna talk about Freddie etiquette and behavior. They kind of came in here and just didn't, weren't really focused and they're just kind of giving them a pep talk and saying, you know, the people at the other schools are great and we have to really be professional. We have a reputation in they and, you know, they have to uphold that. and a television audience, and they're going to watch all of you practice these moves that look perfect, but it's not coming from here. And this is where it needs to come from, and it's not right now. And I understand we've practiced it a lot, and I understand that it's different when we have an audience here. But I'm a little nervous watching it right now and just seeing it here and not here. And that goes for every single song, especially hard music. No one looked like they were having any fun. And you're singing about the song about why, about why you do theater and, and that you feel it in here. And I don't believe any of you. Actually, I believed one girl. And I don't see her, but good job. The leading actors and actresses they put on a medley of all their songs, and so they perform that for the Freddies. And that's a lot of stress on me, but that's fine. I've already had my best experience of the Freddies just going to all the rehearsals. You're not performing for the bows, you're performing for the people around you. 
Okay, when I was performing in the back of my head, I was like, I hope the Freddy Judge is enjoying it right now. And there was one point I remember behind the gate, I was thinking, damn, our show is good. Wouldn't that be a kick-ass way to end senior year, is to win that Freddy? If you can get the one for best show, then it kind of means that everyone put their best foot forward and really deserved that overall award. But as an athlete, you love to win it. But Miss Wesco always says this, and we all agree. It's just about everyone's having fun. And no matter what, it's a good thing if you get nominated, a better thing if you win. But in the end, everyone's just having fun. Well, tonight is the night. Local high school thespians will be honored at the annual Freddie Awards. The excitement is building and nerves are running high. We will air the sixth annual Freddie Awards live right here on WFMZ TV. Tonight, we want to take you back. This is our dance. Gotta come dance with me. This is our chance. Gotta move instantly. the kids here. It absolutely and is. And thank you, all you parents out there, for letting us have them. So let's keep the party rolling. Our first Freddy of the evening. Ready four, take four. We are here to present to Freddy for outstanding performance by an actress in a supporting role. And the nominees are... Katie Wexler. Don Rother. Ariel Brent. Allison Christopher. And the Freddy goes to... 
Katie Wexler. I have to thank the wonderful cast of Les Mis. You guys were so amazing. My two very best friends, um, Ali Mosser and Brandy George, for their endless support. We're going out for cheeseburgers. Thank you so much. <laughs> second nominated musical, which happens to be my alma mater, Emmaus High School. Please right, welcome go. the cast performing a medley from this year's nominated show, Les Miserables. Mother of the house, keeper of the zoo, ready to relieve a mother zoo or two. The water in the wine, making up the weight, picking, picking up, up the knickknacks when they can't see straight. Everybody loves the landlord, everybody's bosom friend. I do whatever please, the days are soon I bleed up in the air. But every day I'm learning All my life I've only been pretending Without me his world will go on turning The world is full of happiness that I have never known Nominees for featured performance by an actress are Ali Mosser, Veronica Strober, Maggie McCloskey, Molly Book, and the Freddy Goes to Veronica Strober as Miss Emily. Time to hear from our third nominated high school, Parkland High School's okay, production go. of Les Miserables. Don't run, Please don't welcome run, the cast as they perform a personal favorite song of mine, One Day More. the Freddy for Outstanding Chorus. And the Freddy goes to... Freedom High School. The Freddy for Outstanding Achievement in Scenery. Parkland High School. And the Freddy goes to... Hackettstown High School. Warren County Technical High School. I'd like to thank the Academy. Blair Academy, that is. Rose Noel! Bye, 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 
seven and push go, Corey. These next young women have been nominated for outstanding performance by an actress in a leading role. Now that you've met Spanish Rose, you'll never forget Spanish Rose. She'll hold you, she'll tame you, but what man can blame you for worshiping Spanish Rose? Not Danish, not British, not Swedish, not Irish, but Spanish Rosa! I am here to present the Freddy for outstanding performance by an actress in a leading role. And the nominees are Amanda Costillas, Valerie Ann, Kira Gilman, Christy Hart, and the Freddy goes to Christy Hart. We are here to present the Freddy for outstanding performance by an actor in a supporting role. And the nominees are Zachary Gibson, Dennis Hahn, Ian Hartman, Ethan Parkinson, and the Freddy goes to Ian Hartman. Now it's time to hear from our final nominated high school, Freedom High School's production of Bye Bye Birdie. by an actor are John Andriadis, Gopal Natarar, Dane Santa, and Alex Hewlett. And the Freddy goes to John Andriadis. been there throughout this whole thing. Miss Wesco is the best. She's the highlight of my life. Thank you so much. It's crazy. I can't. I can't believe it. I'm a senior. We're always excited to begin a Freddy season, and this was no exception. But this was not to be an ordinary year. A couple of months ago, our Freddie coordinator received a very serious diagnosis of cancer. Let me tell you how he handled it. 
He handled it by seeing every single Freddie performance, 26 okay, shows in all, and not missing really? a day in the office. He wow. handled it by coordinating all of our evaluators, processing every application, and keeping in touch with every school and every musical director. All of this while undergoing radiation treatments and medication. Chemotherapy will begin after tonight. I watched him every day as he looked forward to this evening. He told me over and over, the Freddies are my best medicine. Please welcome the man who has the heart and the music and the personification of what the Freddies are all about, our Freddy coordinator, Vic Kuma. <laughs> Enough. Thanks aren't enough uh, for what uh, you have all done for me, and uh, and uh, I appreciate it very much, more than more than you know. Now I am here to present the Freddie for outstanding overall production of a musical, and the nominees are Eastern Area High School for Guys and Dolls, Emmaus High School for Les Miserables, Parkland High School for Les Miserables. Freedom High School for Bye Bye Birdie. Thank you all, have a good night. Oh, wait. <laughs> and the Freddy goes to Emmaus High School in Miserable. Accepting the Freddy Award for Emmaus High School are Christopher Brown, Ali Moser, Ian Hartman, Katie Wexler, Gopal Nataraj, Brandy George, and John Toe. Thank you so much. Mrs. Keebler, Mrs. Keebler, our amazing director. We wouldn't be anything without her. And of course, Ms. Cortez. We wouldn't sound anything like we do without you. Thank you for everything. <laughs> the two Lynn Mizzes bring home a total of five awards. So yeah. what was going on last night? What do you think? Well, I found it very interesting, you know, myself, and I really don't know what was going on last night. I was, I found it quite perplexing. I think last night everyone was sitting there waiting for them to say freedom, because it looked like 
it was going in that direction. And I know some of the kids said that after it was announced, there was a pause before, oh, it really was us, because it, it wasn't looking so good for us. Well, for... but I have to say, you know, also, when we didn't win orchestra, we didn't win lighting, we didn't win set, we didn't win chorus, I thought, all right, we know our show was something pretty special. So if we're not winning all these big awards, maybe there's something coming at the end. <laughs> so but then Parkland was probably thinking the same, the same thing. thing. I don't want to say we're discriminated against. I think we're held to a higher standard. Um, keeping with that, I got an email today from someone I've never met, and they acknowledge the fact that our school has been the standard bearer for years, and that because of Parkland's involvement, theater in the area has risen, and that's a good compliment to our program, but I think it makes us a target. So people, people, I don't want to say love to see us fail, but people like to have that opportunity to see us not succeed. It was incredible that we won two awards that gave us a scholarship for each. You know, we won $2,000 for our theater program. And that's more money than we made from washing cars for an entire day. You know, that's more than a, any single fundraiser. And that's $2,000 for our kids. Last week, I was honored by my principal. He came up to me and he said the superintendent was interested in starting a theater school within Freedom High School. I met with the superintendent and we were sitting in his office and I had a copy of the newspaper. And he said to me, look at that paper. Look at those Freddie nominations. Theater's where it's at. I hope that through the Freddies, they, um, they become better people, number one, but also continue to perform. This is something they can do the rest of their lives. I plan on going to Penn State. I'm hoping to join the theater company, of course. It just seems that theater has that kick that soccer couldn't give me. I know I want to keep theater a part of my life. I don't think I would pursue it professionally. I'm so afraid of rejection. I don't think I would be able to take that. No matter where I go, I can be doing theater in my life, whether it be community or college. It just feels natural for that's me to where be on stage. Exactly. It just feels like when you're on the stage, like that's where you're supposed to be. Because off stage, like you're vulnerable and you're like, what? I'm confused. I don't have friends. I don't. <laughs> where right. am I? And then you're on stage and you know where to go. You know who you are. We have to go into theater. What else would we do with our lives? I don't know. We're, we have to marry rich and go into theater. <laughs> because otherwise we are screwed. We go through a year of ups and downs and financial problems and bad plumbing and patrons with issues and money woes. Every year around April, I think maybe it's time to retire. <laughs> and every May, the kids walk through the door and it's like a vitamin shot to the heart. And when I look at them and I think, these just aren't the people who are gonna be in shows someday, because very few are gonna go on to a career in professional theater. These are the people who are gonna take care of this theater, this town, this world. That's wonderful. That's wonderful.